And just like that, we're back at IAA. Uh, got that guy beside us on the third one here. That guy right there was here yesterday. This guy's new, so what I'm hoping for is to be the second one that gets loaded. Because this guy was here. He was the guy in front of me in line. He was the guy in front of me in line in the office when we were getting our titles. And uh, if you guys missed yesterday's episode, I was here at IAA an hour before they closed. And at 5 o'clock, they shut the office down and left, even though they had people with paperwork and titles already in the parking lot waiting. So um, I'm trying to see. It was somewhere around 4, 4.05 or so. I was in the office waiting. Usually they take stop taking new... You know, new transporters at 4.30, that gives them enough time to get everybody uh, everybody done by 5 or 5-ish. But it's snowing here now. We're south of Chicago, uh, right outside Tinley Park. Tinley Park's actually where I stayed last night. I got a hotel there. And uh, we're going to sit here. This parking lot as an absolute ice rink. So I don't know if maybe that's what happened yesterday, is the, the loaders were just running slower, being careful because of how how slippery this is but i figured they would have at least had somebody come salt this overnight maybe why there's no um why there's no trucks parked here i figured i'd come here and there'd be a couple guys parked uh just waiting but i'm not really sure what this guy's doing it's a guy out of the truck beside me he's walking up to the office and it's they ain't gonna open those doors before eight o'clock, I can guarantee you that. So, not really sure where he's going. All right, well, walked in at eight. Shout out to this guy here. He wasn't here yesterday. So he went ahead and let me in the office first. So we were standing outside talking about what happened. So I am, uh, I'm first to get loaded. So we're just getting two cars, an Impala and a Kia or something like that. So shouldn't take us too long to get everything strapped down but uh shoot i turned the camera off they don't even have the gates open yet so i'm not even gonna get out and get straps oh shout out to walmart i picked up a nice little pullover jacket type deal because i didn't expect to need my big jacket because i should have been gone by now and uh, i would have been just driving all day so stopped at walmart picked up a jacket try to stay warm all right well we got good news guys chain and strapping and uh, then we're off to our next pickup which is a set of uh, forklift forks and we'll figure out where we're going to put those in but at least we're loaded it's just warming up while he was setting these on the trailer well snow's a flying winds are blowing we're on 65 south headed down towards Indianapolis and uh Conditions are just getting worse. There's one in the ditch over, over up against the wall already. Got to deal with it, but uh, should have been out of here by now, and I would have avoided having to, to deal with this today. Well, little fuel island shenanigans. This guy was out pumping fuel in a t-shirt. It's currently... Uh, uh, 23 degrees, probably 20 mile an hour plus winds, but. So in 2022, I'm going to start to pay more attention to my expenses. I, I get in the habit of as I start making more money, I stop caring how much I'm spending. And at the end of the year, it just, it hurts me. It could be money back in my pocket. Most of the time it's stuff with like fuel or equipment. Like I'll go for convenience over price. Like I'll buy stuff at, you know, the auto parts store where I could have just ordered it off Amazon and got it for half the price. Or um, like right now that's why I'm talking about this, like fuel I'm using. So I, I use three different things. I use my fuel card, I use mud flap, and I use get upside, which I'll talk about and um so this is like 34 cent discount off pump price with mud flap so we'll see how much we save here 
Well, the last piece of the puzzle here. Got the cars, still got snow on them. The set of forks, I think it's these here. We're just gonna slide them up front here somehow. That's all they sell is uh, buckets, little equipment, a couple trailers, some snow pushers, a couple trailers, a little bit of everything. So this guy, uh, this is kind of funny. I figured I'd share this. So this guy says, hey, my grandfather will be over there. He's getting a little up there in age. Do you think you can uh, load it yourself? I'm like, yeah, sure. What, like, do you have a piece of equipment? Yeah, we keep a skid loader in the shop to keep it warm if you just want to load them up yourself. I said, oh, that's great. So then he was like, well, I need to call the guy who bought this from me and get authorization um, from him so you can pick it up. And I'm thinking to myself, you're going to let me run your piece of equipment, load up whatever I need to load up, but you're scared of a $1,100 set of forks that I'm randomly going to show up to in Clayton, Indiana to pick up. I know the customer's name. I know their address. I know their business information. I even know the owner of the business's cell phone number. So I texted him and said, hey, can you call the guy and just let him know that I'm the one picking it up in case he wants a copy of my license or something. But he said, I don't care. Just sign my name. Well, LTL, I guess. Here's what we came for. Been on the trailer far enough. That's so why I had that car cocked over like that at IAA. Let's go home. Now see, uh, with hopping on, checking all three sources of which is the cheapest for fuel, and ourselves here at the TA in uh, which is London, Ohio. TA and Petro is the biggest discount with my fuel card, and uh, it's 3.18 a gallon. Uh, pump price for is 3.77, so saving a good bit of money there. And uh, if I fill up here, I shouldn't have to stop uh, anymore on the way home. And uh, I just realized it's uh, it's 4:30, and I didn't even eat a lunch. So we're gonna get lunch and dinner at the same time, and we should be. Uh, should be touching down at home before midnight. It's put me back so many hours, probably about six hours or so, having to wait around to eight o'clock this morning to get those um get those cars loaded. But like I said in the last video, they paid so well that I just I had to stick it out, get that hotel, and um, just get it done. That's one of my goals in 2022 is is to just be more patient. So with with the way I operate, I always try, the way I price my freight outbound is my face is so windburnt. Oh gosh, it hurts. Anyways, I price my freight outbound uh, to make me enough money where the, the backhaul is a, kind of like a filler, enough to make a few dollars, you know, pay for all my expenses, but get me home. Sorry, I'm fighting in the fuel line here because people are just blocking the pumps. Anyways, um, I was doing it so, and this guy just pulled in and he rolls right into the pump, so I picked the wrong lane. Um, but I priced my outbound freight to kind of like make me my money now so I could get home quick. So my plan in 2022 is to really work at just, just being patient. And if it takes me an extra day to get home, but I make X amount more dollars, I take the time to find the good paying loads on the way home, not just what's convenient for me, which is why I have, you know, I picked up these forks. Yeah, they're for a family friend of mine, but it also pays for, you know, all my expenses, at least all my expenses on the way home, all my fuel and everything like that. So, being patient would end up making me more money because I do have some goals dollar wise in, in 22 and maybe I'll discuss those and, and give you guys an idea of what I uh, would like to make for the year and uh, what I think I'm capable of making. Anyways, instead of rambling,
let's uh let's just wait here in line get fuel pull forward like you're supposed to and uh get us some lunch and dinner at the same time well another day another dollar we're here in rosedale maryland getting ready to deliver these these units i don't know if you can see all those cars out there these things everything ends up going over to the port they got containers they stuff them all in and then they go to the port that way and then they're shipped overseas so when picking up some of these cars from salvage auctions depending on what state they're wrecked in or how bad they're wrecked there's different stages of the title oh shoot i just came across that railroad track And it's just a stop sign and you have to like look yourself Whew. and it's on a downhill so you better be better be slowing down coming down that but anyways so there's different titles different stages of the titles so if you see on these like depending on what state they're wrecked on how bad they are there can be like rebuildable they can be for parts only um now this is an illinois title This car can, is salvage only, can never be re-registered, and has to be exported. Why they do that is they don't want people to be able to purchase, like, I say sketchy, but most of the time they are. These, like, independent, like, car fixers that will, you know, just mesh cars together, take 10 parts from this one, 10 parts from this one, put them together, and then put them out on the road, and they end up not being safe vehicles. You know, because half the time, um, they'll do that with a car that has a, like, the main vehicle has a clean vent, so it never has to get inspected or anything. So it's kind of one of the one of the ways they uh, they try to stop that. But of course, there's always ways around that. We're gonna sit here in line. There's, um, I'm glad I made it on the other side of the railroad track. They just opened, so I see like. I see a loader firing up over there because it's smoking like crazy because it's a little cold out. Let's see what this guy wants. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Thank you. If you can please back up and take a little bit side to just keep this way open. Yep. Will do. Thank you, sir. Yep. Small road back here. He wants me to. He wants me to hug this corner over here. Even though there is a uh, uh, didn't want to happen. There's a bunch of snow on the ground. Anyways, they just got the loaders fired up over there. I can see them smoking and carry on since it's cold out here. So we'll wait. Uh, I see one, two, three three four trucks in front of me or so uh, but it looks like a pretty good operation as to where obviously they do this every day all day so should get people sped up and then they'll actually pay me through um ACH or they'll do PayPal as soon as it's done so get paid by PayPal today so we'll have our money not have to chase it oh, update I've been here for an hour and uh, I guess people are getting sick and tired and just leaving. Not really sure what's going on. I haven't even gotten out of the truck because, like this guy here, is he coming out? Yep. He's just leaving. Looks like another one's just leaving. I wonder what's going on. Let's see if I can flag one of these guys down and see what's going on. What's going on in there? Huh. Where they're for? Where's, where's the office? Right up there? All right, sounds good, man. Thanks. 
I don't know if you could hear that. They're not accepting cars from certain customers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up right here and I'm gonna walk around and see uh, see if they're accepting the cars from the customer that I have. So we'll walk up here and see what, uh, just see what's going on. Well, this is the stuff, oh, there's the trucks moving. Been here an hour and a half and they haven't unloaded a single vehicle yet. So, said so there's trucks clear around the building and no one's moved. So, we'll see. Uh, this guy's from Massachusetts. There's a nine car from Chicago. This guy's local. I see this guy all the time with that uh, single rear wheel truck there. I see him running around all Maryland and Pennsylvania. All right, well, let's see. Uh, things start moving. We'll see what, uh, we're gonna see what happened. I just text the guy who their cars are for. And I said, hey, are they not accepting cars? We, uh, we've we been sitting here for an hour and a half and they haven't unloaded a single vehicle. Like, I get it if they're unloading and it's just, we're just waiting in line. But if they haven't unloaded a single thing because they said they're full, like, what's going on? I'm going to leave. I'm going to go hook up to the, the wedge and get some other work done, to be honest. So, uh, seems to always be something kind of sucks though because I needed this flatbed to be empty. <sighs> needed to... Now I'm trying to plan because I needed this to be empty because I got to pick up some cultivators for a customer that heads to Rhode Island. Tomorrow it's going to snow. So I'm trying to get work done, local work done, the rest of today and tomorrow to be ready and be loaded with the cultivators to be ready for Monday after the storm passes. See, it's a logistical nightmare, and that's why I carry a little notebook around. So I can't keep it all in my brain, that's for sure. All right, well, I think I'm gonna make an executive decision. I think I'm gonna go ahead and head out, which sucks. Of other work that could be done, but I need this trailer empty, but thankfully I have the single cab and the wedge. I can move some move some local cars that I need to get done. I don't have time to sit here all day. It's, uh, they opened at nine, it's almost 11 now. Not a single car has been unloaded. Not a single one. And there's, I see there's four trucks at least in front of me. And I've already seen three guys leave. So, well, <laughs> as soon as I start saying that, there's a truck moving. Maybe they're unloading now. Let's, uh, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it another, oh, trucks are moving. I need to get them off. So if I have to wait a little bit, now that I see progress, it's just frustrating, but once you see some progress, then the bad part is there's like a nine car, seven car, a three, two, three cars in front of me, but we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll make it work. If we have to, we'll leave. And, uh, I've already been in contact with the broker, which the broker is at, it hits the customer. So he needs these cars unloaded just as bad as I do. He actually, uh, I see what, there's another nine car. Hold on. I didn't see that nine car because that was wrapped around the building. See that yellow one out there? They're unloading him now, so there's progress. That guy there must be somewhat in charge. He's waddling around. And, uh, <laughs> guess maybe he's getting people moving. Man, this place is getting wild. That dude's not happy. Blowing his horn. 
Tell me I gotta get the get away. Well, there's progress. That first nine car is unloaded. Forklift driver came around, told that guy to follow him, so then we're uh, making progress. Huh. That's weird. Hmm. Wonder why they're still on my trailer. All right, let me get out of the wind. So I sat there for three hours from the time I got there. It's there at 8.50. Um, I didn't leave till, wait, is that when I was there? I sat there for two hours, three hours. No, it was three. I was there at 8.50. I didn't leave till 11.50. It's 12.30 now, so back to the house. Um, so they rejected the load because the guy, this customer, I guess they have like each customer that they take care of has a certain slot of amount of cars. And then it's their responsibility to get their cars out of there into a container or to the port or whatever and headed overseas while well, this guy is is behind or he's getting too many cars and he doesn't have any room there at there so when they saw my paperwork after being there for three hours he says i don't have any room for this guy's cars i've told him since monday i don't have any room for him it's uh it's thursday now he says i've been telling this guy yet he had you bring these cars here so i called the guy let him speak to the manager and then i texted the guy said hey because he on the phone he was jabbering jabbering and jabbering and wasn't making very much sense i was like i'll text you um i am not delivering these cars anywhere else because he's saying he's got another lot i said i'm not delivering these cars anywhere else till i have my full payment and then we'll discuss me going for a redeliver fee so thankfully this happens when i'm close to home and i can just come home obviously i can hop in this single cab right here if i needed to but which I was gonna do, but I did just find some help to move some cars for me. So I've got things to do around here. It's gonna snow tomorrow. Um, so I've got things to do here. Um, horse, gotta clean horse stalls. I gotta fix a tire. Like I got stuff to do. I didn't thought I'd have three extra hours today to be able to do it, but that's that. Well, everything's hooked to trailers. I guess this is our tire hauler now. So we got those tires dropped off at the tire shop. Um, that one trailer tires for the uh, for the horse trailer literally has uh, like a hundred miles on it. It got a nail on the tire. So we're gonna get both of those fixed. There's a there's a screw in both of them, patchable. So they're gonna patch them. Um, anyways, so the saga continues with this whole two cars brought out of Chicago I told the guy I wasn't gonna move or which I I was going home I uh, so I, I went home an hour out of the way from where I was at the drop and uh, about 12 o'clock I was like I need paid I'm not gonna keep running around to all these warehouses sitting in line until I get paid for you know the run cuz like agreed that there's going to be an extra fee and I need money before I start running around. Just a way to protect yourself is, is to make sure you get money before you move in a situation like that. Anyways, so he's like, can you deliver to this warehouse? He gives me the location and the contact number and I was like, yeah, no problem once I'm paid. So call the guy and he's like I don't have any room for cars till Monday I'm like the guy said he just talked to you and he said you had room for these cars he's like I don't think I have room but I'll call you back in the meantime the guy's like can you deliver to New Jersey I said well not today or tomorrow because we're getting four to six inches of snow I'm not headed to New Jersey in a mess like that then he goes well, what if I send another carrier to you? I was like, well, they better have a rollback because both these cars are wrecked and both of them are in op. I don't know. It's going to have to have like a four car rollback if you think that's going to work. Or you can pay for a rollback to put them on someone else's trailer. It just keeps going and going and going. And now it's four o'clock. 
This whole, st this whole thing started at 9 o'clock this morning. It's 4 o'clock now, and I still... I, I got money, thankfully. He did pay, but it's like I still have the car stuck on my trailer, so I can't go get these cultivators, which is... It, it, even though I have my money, it's putting me more and more and more behind the longer this saga continues. And welcome to today's episode of Problem Solving and the Saga Continues with Jason. I'm going to transfer these cars over onto the ledge. I got them both. Oh, well, this one's not running right now, but I had them both running. So we should be able to transfer right over onto the ledge. And uh, obviously with this car parked on the ramps like that, don't have enough room to back up to flip the ramps to unload regular. So we're just going to transfer them like this. And... Uh, And we have yet another location to uh, to deliver to, which is down in Virginia. I have to head down that way tomorrow anyways. The guy is paying extra to have them re-delivered to Virginia. The gentleman who's receiving the vehicles has a storage lot who is going to end up delivering them to Georgia. They're going to Savannah. So they're trying to, I was gonna try to get them shipped out of the port of Baltimore or Dundalk or somewhere in that vicinity and uh, no one has room of storage for these until they can get them in a container so that's uh that's where we're at right now and uh got some money in my pocket but we'll just get the rest once we get these delivered tomorrow well got them both running got them both transferred deliver them tomorrow in the snow leave nice and early try to beat it of course, we take the aluminum trailer and the two-wheel drive truck instead of the four-wheel drive truck and the steel trailer. But hey, gotta do what you gotta do.